Live from Pittsburgh, it's Rona with a really bad cold. Well, I just got back from my local theater where they showed the live production of Anna Bolena by Donizetti from the Met. And although this is not going to be at all a review, I thought it would be fun to post some random thoughts. Why did I go to this? Well, I don't even like bel canto operas. I'm bored to tears with Lucia, Sonambula, you name it. But I do like the comedies. However, they are a standard part of the repertoire, and we get to see them here and there. The opera Anna Bolena is rarely done, and this, of course, was the Met's uh, first production of it, although it was written quite a long time ago. And the big interest in this opera was as I used to call her Anna Natrepko, but now I see everybody's calling her Anya Natrepko, so whatever. In general, uh, I'm glad I went to see the opera, but I had a lot I have a lot of thoughts about what happened. First, I had read the reviews, and the reviews were very kind to Anna, and not so kind to the conductor, mixed reviews on the uh, production. My take on the conductor, whose last name is Am Amaliato, something like that, was he did an okay job. It didn't seem terrible or wonderful. He was there, he waved his arms, the musicians played. And everybody seemed to be together. Was it inspired? I have no idea, as I've never heard this opera before. First comes the overture, which is a tuny kind of thing, and I had a feeling I, I was going to hear those tunes later, and I was right. Then the curtain comes up, and I was expecting a grand set, and it was very dreary. The set does open up later. The, um, the walls of the castle kind of open up to a forest, and that's done very nicely. Other than that, the sets are awful, but the costumes were wonderful. They looked like the old paintings of Henry VIII and his wife, Anne Boleyn. So now we get to the singing. We'll leave Anya for last. I know I'm going to really murder all the names of the Russians. The After uh, Anna Bolena, the main character is the one who, who is Jane Seymour in Italian. Her first name is pronounced Giovanna, whatever, and however they say Seymour. I don't know, Seymora, whatever. And her name, she's a Russian, her name is... Ekaterina Gubanova. I thought she was a fabulous singer. I really liked her voice. I thought that the role sat very high for her, but she, uh, she was able to pull it off. Some of the high notes sounded stretched. There was one scene where she and uh, Anna Netrebko do a duet, and that was extremely good because their voices were very well matched. The tenor was the young American Stephen Costello. I've been following his career for about three years now on YouTube. I remember hearing him as a student from AVA doing uh, some operatic scenes and also the Injimisco from one of the masses. I thought he had a beautiful voice and a great future. And that's still what I think. He has a beautiful voice and a great future. His acting was the low point of his portrayal. In the HD feed you could see his eyes were sort of darting around, not really focused on what was going on. Most of his singing was very beautiful. Some of his high notes seemed to be that he, he couldn't quite get to them, so he kind of helped himself up a little. Other than that, he did really well. A very good friend of mine who knows the opera way better than I do said that it's a very difficult role. I believe her. I don't know. Then comes the person who plays Henry VIII, or as he's called in this opera, Enrico. And he's a Russian with a really hard name to pronounce because there are so many consonants that come together. It's something like Ildar Abdrazakov. I hope I didn't butcher it too badly. I thought he had a nice voice. It was a typical basso voice, very rich and full. Nothing uh, tremendously outstanding in the good or bad way. The biggest surprise for me was the, I think she's American, contralto or mezzo. Her name is 
Tamara Mumford. She played the page. I thought she was fabulous. What a gorgeous voice. It's just a beautiful instrument, and she's an outstanding singer. Okay, now, now that we've gotten through all that, what did I think of Anna? Like, you, why, would even, why would anybody even care? But here it is. It's her show, and she did great. I love when she goes up to the high notes because she does what she wants. They're light, they're medium, they're strong. Whatever she wills them to be, they are. This role seems to go from very, very high all the way to the bottom of the soprano range. And when she was at the bottom, I did not really care for it. I thought she had a poor transition to the bottom. But I know it's considered to be one of the hardest roles. I wouldn't know about it personally, as I never even opened up a score for it. Um, she also was criticized by some people as not having a trill. I thought she had a very nice trill. In the middle, it sounds a little murky sometimes, but overall she was fabulous. Act one of this opera, I thought it was that they combined seven acts. It was so long and boring. I prayed for sleep and I got it twice. I almost left after what was the first act, which I was so sure they had combined several, but they hadn't. Because I was so bored, I didn't want to stay for the second act, but I did. And I wasn't feeling well either, but I soldiered on, and I was really glad I stayed for the second act, because that's when it got good. I was even um, captivated by the story, which I was not interested in at all in that interminable act one. And um, in Act 2, Anna sings a beautiful aria. I didn't know it before all this Anna Bolena stuff started coming out. And it's called Al Dolce Guidami. It's gorgeous. And uh, Mr. Trebko sang it just beautifully. She held the audience in the palm of her hand. Her eyes were filled with tears. And it was so moving that a tear fell down my face. Really rare for me. I'm not sure that's ever happened before in an opera. I know I've cried at ballets, but not an opera. And then she sang the very famous cabaletta at the end, Copia Nicu, whatever it's called. I don't know the name. It's The Wicked Couple. And it's a, a very dramatic and big coloratura uh, part. I thought she did that very well very dramatically. And then the opera comes to an end, everybody claps and goes home. And so did I. I would say if you're thinking of seeing the encore production, I highly recommend it. If you're a little unsure, just go for the second act, which starts way past the halfway point. Or if you're in New York and you can get a ticket, go and see it. I'll also be interested to hear Angela Mead sing the role. It'll be fun to compare the two. I hope you all have a good evening. Good night.